Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting the like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too, or really helps out. And let's crack straight on with today's first story. Now, today's first story comes from Throw Away My Spermazoa. Great name. Who says, Wife, female 33, and I, male 34, decided to try for kids last year. Found out I'm completely infertile without surgery. Five months later, she got pregnant. I literally don't know what to do. This is long. My wife and I have been married for three years, together for six. She's always been one of the most amazing people I've ever met. No huge fights, love languages match up, and we're both fairly active people, which has been why we've always had a really strong relationship for so long. That's why this is so difficult for me. We've both been doing pretty well in our careers the last few years. She's in marketing and I work independently as an IT consultant, allowing me to set my own hours and be pretty flexible. We decided last year that we wanted to start a family, her most likely keeping her job full time and me scaling back to part time. We've both been anxious but pretty excited to have our own kids. Long story short, I was diagnosed with, excuse the pronunciation here, a zoospermia last year. Blockage in the pipes just meant I wasn't actually producing any sperm when ejaculating. It's curable with surgery, thankfully, and we finally got it scheduled this July. She's got a high sex drive, as do I, so we've been very sexually active, but there should have been no way I could have gotten her pregnant. She missed her period this week. I couldn't imagine that she might actually be pregnant, right? The babies are bottled in until they actually get the blockage out. She took three tests though, and sure enough, they're all positive. At first, I was stunned because this shouldn't be possible. She's never been unfaithful to me in the past and never given me a reason not to trust her. I'm not the jealous type, but I'm literally stuck. The doctor said this couldn't happen and I can't believe my wife would jeopardize the future we've been so excited for over some fling when we seem to have such a great emotional and physical connection. My wife's been ecstatic. She's given no indication of any guilt or worry that she may have cheated. She was so excited when she first found out that, that I didn't express my worries then. But she left for work and now I feel completely torn. What if she did cheat? Looking back now, there's a few tiny things that didn't seem to be an issue but now have me racking my brain for clues. Her job often has her taking clients out for dinner and it's not uncommon for her to get back later in the evening. She's definitely had a busy last few months, but that's not uncommon for her job. She always wears one of the same two perfumes, but she came back one night smelling completely different. I remember seeing a text message on her lock screen, just a winky face, a different time, but assumed it was one of her girlfriends. Fuck man, I don't know what to do. I set up an appointment on Monday to see if there's any chance it could be mine. If it is mine and I accuse her of cheating, I feel like the world's biggest asshole but she's coming home in a few hours and I don't know what I'm going to say to her. I can't stop thinking of these small things that may have been her cheating and I just didn't see it. Do I wait until the doctor appointment Monday before talking to her or do I bring up these insecurities while she's celebrating the pregnancy? I'm worried I won't be able to hide what's going on. Edit. I should add, I've been cheated on before. Our relationship has been pretty healthy, but that old fear is creeping back in now. I'm not sure how to just wait until the appointment. Edit, I really hope you all are right that some freak sperm made it past. My wife's coming home though in an hour and I have to decide if I'm going to put on a happy face until Monday or not. Edit, she texts saying she's going to be home late. This is bringing up some old emotional scars, I think, and it's just fucking with me. I'm usually never this insecure or uncertain about being straightforward. I think I need to just find some way to bring it up without being accusatory. And someone asked in the comments, are you sure no sperm got out? How are you sure? And they reply saying they seem pretty certain that none could get through because of the type of blockage. And we do have a couple of updates on this one as well. And some of the comments on this one were, you know, giving advice on what to do. A lot of people saying, you know, don't say nothing till you have the test because it, like OP thinks it could come across as accusatory and damage the relationship of like mistrusting one another, etc. Others saying just talk to her about your insecurities, tell her what you think, and obviously she knows you're blocked up, so you know you've got some concerns going on in your mind. But let's go to that first update to see which path OP took. Update. First, I just want to thank everyone who reached out and offered their story about Simla. 
I can't believe how many people are told they're completely sterile and end up being able to have kids anyways. I took a lot of what you guys said to heart. I had an ex of mine from years ago end up cheating on me and it really left a scar for a while. It wasn't until I got more involved with sports and getting in better shape that I was able to try and move on. My wife and I actually met in a soccer league we were in together. We had so much trust for so long that I thought those fears had gone away. It wasn't until now I really started to feel shaken like that again. But I didn't want to let my past get in the way of what could be just a huge blessing. A few people really articulated the right way to communicate my feelings in a way that wasn't accusatory and respectful of my wife, who's never really given me a reason to doubt her. It's not uncommon for her to sometimes be home late and, and she'll usually like go straight to bed. I didn't want to dump this on her immediately and decided to give myself a night to sleep on it. I got up pretty early just being restless, went for a run and cleared my mind. I couldn't wait any longer. I made our favorite omelets and told her I needed to talk about something. She said, you know, I'm not Ashley, right? She knows me so well. Ashley's my ex who cheated. So first I apologized. I apologized because I let this build up in my head for so long without talking about it sooner. What should be a blessing has been nothing but insecurity and fear for me. We talked for a while. I told her how happy it made me to see her ecstatic and excited for the baby. I told her how much I loved the relationship that we built together and I felt like an arsehole for questioning her loyalty. She has never given me a reason not to trust her and that I still couldn't emotionally get over the thoughts of infidelity because of my ex. She thanked me for telling her and she knew how hard it was for me to get over that. She volunteered to have us get a paternity right after he, she's born, which made me feel a lot better at first, but something still felt off. I honestly don't know why. Something about how she was so eager to get a paternity test and almost not mad at me at all for having kept this from her. Normally she would have been upset that I didn't bring it up right away, but there was just a weird feeling I couldn't shake for the rest of the day. It seemed like she was saying all the right things, but I couldn't get rid of this clawing feeling inside my head. Maybe I'm just being paranoid. Maybe there's a gut feeling that I need to listen to. But I ended up going to the appointment alone and we decided it would be good to see if I still needed the surgery. Turns out it's obstructive as zoospermia. I've read so many stories about people who are supposed to be infertile end up getting pregnant. So I brought that up and how my wife's pregnancy was affecting me. The urologist thought it would be pretty unlikely that I wouldn't need surgery to have a kid with how mine was presenting itself. He mainly tried to skirt around the topic and mostly pushed me towards making sure she was actually pregnant. Being there didn't really help. I feel like I just got more uncertainty. She had another night being out till 8.30 last night. We talked about scheduling an appointment to verify the pregnancy when she got home. She seemed a little confused, but then quickly agreed. She promised to do it in the morning. I asked how work had gone and she gave me a kind of non-committal answer about her boss pushing her too much and being stressed out. There's nothing huge there, but she just seemed off. I really couldn't put my finger on it. We were still acting all lovey-dovey, but something just felt wrong and I couldn't talk about it without repeating the same conversation we had had Sunday. I've been trying to throw myself into work to distract myself, but I haven't been able to focus. We have a joint checking account that will sometimes move money in and out of, but really only use it for groceries or household items unless we talk about it beforehand. This morning, she moved half of it to hers, about $1,700. We don't do that. She's never needed to before. And I checked that healthcare portal and she made the appointment for the one time Thursday that I mentioned I was busy working on site. We were supposed to go together. I'm starting to go crazy. How do I bring this up that it isn't me just having the same conversation again? I'm looking into getting a second opinion for myself, but I need a litmus test from objective outsiders to know if I'm really losing it or if this seems weird to someone else. I've been trying to center myself. We talk calmly for a bit on the phone. She claims she moved the money out in anticipation for the deductible payments she'll have with different visits. I didn't bring up anything else, but she seemed a little impatient with me probably rightly so, and implied would have a longer talk when she gets home. I'm just trying not to overreact right now. I don't know what to think. This is either a misunderstanding on my side and I'm a father or not. Thankfully, she's not working late today. Thank you those who are trying to keep me grounded. 
mini update before update two that says, I went for a long run to clear my mind, got a shower, and then my wife should be home. I'm going to go into the conversation with no judgment, just objectively walk out the facts and why I've still been struggling personally with some of them. Regardless of what happens, I'm done with any confusion left between us. Thanks to those who messaged me and gave me advice. And we do have another update. So update two says, I'm sorry to drag you all through the worst of my insecurities. I definitely channeled quite a bit of my negative shit into what I posted, but hey, that's what anonymous people are good for sometimes, I guess. Anyways, we finally sat down after she got home last night. I told her everything that was going on, the urologist, the money, the upcoming appointment. I told her how, even with all her reassurances, too many suspect things kept happening. She agreed how everything looked and immediately apologized. She didn't realize how much my last ex's cheating was still affecting me. She knew I was going off into the weekend, but thought we addressed that. We talked about it Sunday, but I can get pretty internal with all these worries and not show them outwardly. And so while she had thought we were communicating, I wasn't. We decided to start from the beginning and go through everything together. The money was the real problem for me. She agreed how inconsiderate it was at where my head was at to do that without mentioning it. Apparently, the prenatal visits are so structured that they want you to set up a payment plan with them right away. And she wanted to make sure it was squared away to keep the appointment. She offered without me prompting to call them with me tomorrow to verify that. Or if I really wanted, we could move the money back. She does get better rewards out of her, so it kind of made sense. We read up on obstructive azospermia, and it doesn't seem like they're often invincible force fields. It seems like only the actual absence of the vas deferens, CBAVD, actually guarantees complete infertility, so it is possible for some to get through. We're going to go back to the original specialist I was working with last year and hopefully get a clearer picture. It turns out the appointment she made was the only time they had available so soon and figured it'd be best not to wait. I told her I took off work to go with her and she was relieved I could join. Once again, she said all the right things and seems genuine about us getting on the same page. After going through each thing I was wishing, I believed her a little more before. She stressed out with work and, and when she'll have to take off, but she really seemed to want to go out of her way to alleviate my concerns. She even offered an open phone policy if I needed, we did look at the text I had seen and it was just a girlfriend. I decline though right now since I don't want to be that husband. This has really made me take a deeper look at what's in my past and how that still affects me today. Even thinking back to this weekend, it was so hard to see in the moment how much all the uncertainty was affecting me. That level of anxiety literally makes you question what around you is real. I think the trust but verify is the best way to put it. I was just trying to verify without any of the trust is all. This has all put a strain on our marriage right now, but I'm feeling a bit more like we're a team again, working towards easing that. She thought that an NIPP or NIP ASAP was a great idea, as long as we also get some kind of counseling together. I'm not big on therapy, but I can probably agree that it will most likely help. I'm feeling a bit better about everything. Thanks again to everyone who reached out and shared their own story. Every other comment here I read was a story of a family member who was supposed to be barren and ended up popping out triplets. And most of all those helped me try to communicate fairly through all this. It's time for me to hopefully be a father. And a one line update that says the paternity test came back initially positive for anyone that's going to see this. And now I'm gonna turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? How do you think OP dealt with it? How do you think the wife dealt with it as well? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll move on to another story. And our next story is a bit of a different relationship story. It's coming from the Pro Revenge subreddit that was suggested by someone on Discord. So thank you, you know who you are. And it's titled, Boyfriend Cheats on Me with Step Siblings. So I get him kicked out and destroys relationship with his parents. Hello, Reddit people. I've been wanting to post my story on here for absolutely ages, but I've never got around to doing it. So then I figured since I have a Reddit account now, I might as well post it. When I was around 17, I started dating a guy, 19. I'll call him Jake for the sake of this post. Also age of consent where I live is 16, so nothing illegal happening here. We got on well, spent a lot of time together and cared for each other a lot. We even started talking about living together once we both moved out. We were a perfectly happy couple, or so I thought. 
You see, after we'd been dating for a few months, something in Jake changed. He was getting a lot more distant. Whenever he was with me, he'd be checking his phone constantly. We stopped spending as much time together and he started getting really funny about public affection, regarding things like handholding and stuff. He seemed to start caring less and less about my feelings. I used to have a bit of a thing for humiliation in the bedroom, nothing too far, and we'd spoken about what Jake should and shouldn't say, but he started to get more and more degrading. He'd tell me how no one would ever love me and would pick on my insecurities. I actually broke down crying a few times when this happened. To give him a bit of credit, the first few times he did stop everything he was doing and apologized and cuddled with me until I felt better, but eventually that stopped too, and he just began rolling his eyes and telling me to grow up. He was like a completely different person. The insults started to seep into our everyday life. He'd pick on my appearance a lot, bring up my family. I was dealing with a lot of family issues at the time. Bring up the fact that I slept around before we started dating. A sort of rebellion caused by the family issues, etc. If I got upset by it, he'd just leave the room and let me cry by myself. I started to feel like it was my fault our relationship was falling apart. Maybe I just wasn't good enough for him. I knew deep down that he was cheating on me and that was confirmed when I got a message from a guy, David, on Facebook telling me that he'd been sleeping with Jake. He apologized profusely and told me that he broke things off with Jake as soon as he found out he had a boyfriend. I couldn't be mad at David. It wasn't his fault. We spoke for hours and I reassured David that it wasn't his fault and that he had done nothing wrong. David also helped me to stop making excuses for Jake's attitude and the way he'd been acting. He was a godsend. The thing that truly broke me happened not too long after the cheating was discovered. We'd been arguing a hell of a lot more. Then he decided to do something absolutely unforgivable. You see, I had a strained relationship with my father for years. He'd cheat on my mother constantly and eventually he'd settled down and had kids with a girl he'd been seeing behind her back. He did try to have some sort of relationship with me till I was about 13 or 14-ish and then decided that he didn't love me as much as his other kids and we stopped any and all contact. It broke me and it still hurts to think about it to this day. Anyway, Jake went out of his way to find one of my step-siblings online and slept with them. He bragged about it the next day and my step-sibling actually posted online about what happened and I received a bunch of messages from their friends telling me how I had deserved it. This was probably the lowest point in my life and I hated myself, partly for allowing it to happen and partly because I had started to believe what they were saying. My only solace during this time was David. I didn't want to burden my friends with my problems and David was one of the only people who knew firsthand what Jake was like. We spoke for a few weeks and eventually talk turned to revenge. I had tried calling things off a couple of months prior due to Jake's awful behavior but he started with apologies and telling me he didn't mean it. He'd never do it again. He even spoke to some of my family members who unknowingly pressured me to get back together with him as we were such a sweet couple. I hadn't wanted to tell them the real reason that we'd broken up, so I kept the details pretty vague, though I'm pretty sure some of them had seen my step-siblings post and knew why I didn't want to be with him. After weeks of talking and planning, I finally had enough and decided to do something about it. My father wasn't exactly a rich man, but he worked a pretty well-paying job and earned enough money to live fairly comfortably. He had began spreading rumors around when I was younger, during a custody battle with my mother, that he had set up a trust fund for me and there was enough money there to get me set up in my own place when I was 18, plus a bit extra. I knew that this was absolute bullshit. He tried to get out of paying child support all the time. Of course, he'd never set up a trust fund for me. However, Jake didn't. We'd never spoken about it a lot, but he'd heard rumors and I'd always just say what I told you folks. My father was an appalling parent who grudged paying my mother child support, so why the hell would he set up a trust fund? But Jake wouldn't listen. He even did his own research into the type of job my father worked and came up with an estimate of how much he thought my father was earning. Though, to his credit, he did drop the subject whenever I asked him to. For a while anyways. I decided to use this to my advantage. Jake and I were still dating though I avoided him any chance I got. Until one night where I sat him down and told him that since I'd be turning 18 in a couple of weeks, I'd start thinking about us getting our own place with a trust fund my father had set up for me. He immediately cheered up at this point and honestly, I think that night was the first time in months that he'd said anything nice to me when we weren't in public or with friends and family. 
This very nearly made me want to call the whole thing off, but I spoke with David later that night and he reminded me that Jake would go back to his usual degrading attitude in no time. We started looking at flats, though Jake was kind enough to let me have the final say and handle the paperwork, because how could he possibly go out and cheat on me if he had to sort out the paperwork for a flat? I was a little surprised by this to be very honest and I'd always thought that he'd want his name on the paperwork and everything so I couldn't kick him out. But by this point, he'd slept with my step-sibling, degraded me, smashed my self-confidence to pieces and cheated on me regularly. I think by now, he thought I wouldn't kick him out no matter what he did. Anyways, I started taking up extra shifts at work to try and save enough money to actually move out. Not with Jake though, oh no. I was moving in with my friend, Emma. We'd both been thinking about moving out for a while anyways and thought, why not just be roommates? We found a cute little one bedroom flat that was close enough to our college and work and started getting stuff sorted to move in. I also didn't want to bring any trouble to my mother's door if Jake started kicking up a fuss. Emma had no issues with clawing the face off him if need be and told me not to worry about him coming to our front door. Then came the next part of the plan. I waited a week or so before Jake and I were supposedly moving into our own flat and stole his phone for a few minutes. He stopped caring about leaving his phone unattended and would sometimes flat out brag about how lucky he was to be able to sleep with whomever he wanted and come home to a little bitch who'd make him dinner. So that day when he went for a shower, he wasn't all too bothered about taking his phone with him. Perfect. I went onto his phone, deleted my number from his contacts and changed the name of his MM's contact as mine. Pleased, I went to the kitchen, smashed one of the plates. It was my mother's, but it was a cheap one from a local shop. I did replace it as soon as possible. I left for work and everything was done. My mother had left for work a couple of hours prior, so she was safe. I just needed a reason for him to get pissed off and oh boy, did he get pissed off. His first reaction was to text me, calling me all the disgusting names under the sun. Except it wasn't me he texted, it was his mum. I texted her in advance and told her that I hoped she'd forgive me, but she had to see what her son was really like. She never tried to defend him as much as she just hadn't known how bad his behavior was. She actually called him out a couple of times when he'd slipped up and been harsh with me when she was there. She went apeshit. I never found out exactly how that argument went as she phoned him to scream at him and call him out for his shitty behavior. Finally seeing how horrible her son was, it didn't help that she'd been sent screenshots of some of the times where he'd admitted to cheating. She was absolutely disgusted by her son's behavior and phoned me to apologize on Jake's behalf. It wasn't her fault though. He's old enough to know how to act like a damn adult. He wound up telling his mum essentially that her opinion didn't matter and he'd be moving in with me anyways. Needless to say, when he called me on Facebook, after I deleted my number from his phone, I took some satisfaction in telling him that we weren't moving in together, that the trust fund wasn't real. I'd already told him that in the past, he just refused to listen, and that I'd moved in with Emma. I was called all the sluts and whores under the sun. His voice sort of turned into white noise after a while. I told him we're over and hung up and blocked him on everything. He had to run back to his mum and dad, his tail between his legs, and they took him back for a little while. Though after a bit, the arguments became too much and his parents kicked him out. He stayed with a couple of friends for a few months before he managed to get his own place. His parents, especially his mother, has not been the same with him since. I still talk to his mum on occasion. Lastly, David and I took the liberty of sending screenshots of Jake's abuse to as many of the people he'd been hooking up with as possible. A couple of sleepless nights were spent trying to track people down on Facebook. Part of it was to get back at Jake, but most of it was to make sure that none of them got roped into a full relationship with him and had to deal with all the crap I'd gone through. So there it is, my little story of pro revenge. I know this is really long, so there's a TLDR below. I wasn't ever planning on posting my story, but I was scrolling through Facebook the other day and one of Jake's new accounts popped up on the people you may know section. After talking with Emma about it, she suggested posting it here. Hope it fits the subreddit. Bye. And a little edit to clear some stuff up, which is edit, okay, first, thank you for all the kind comments and awards. I'm doing a lot better now. This happened a few years ago and I haven't had to deal with Jake since. Secondly, I saw a few people getting confused about the plate part, thinking I was still in the house, so why would he text me? I had left for work by the time he'd gotten out of the shower, so he couldn't yell at me. Also, my mother was at work, so I didn't leave her with him. Don't worry. I edited this in my original post just to clear some things up, just in case some people by chance don't see the edit. I hope this helps. And last quick edit, I saw a lot of people were confusing the comments about my gender. I'm a bisexual male. Jake was also bisexual. 
I hope this cleared up some confusion. I don't know why I hadn't written it before now. The whole change in the, the names and the phone, so he messaged his mum the abusive shit was quite quite a move i got to say but what do you guys make of this one let me know your thoughts in the comments below do you like hearing a bit of pro revenge or other subreddits based around relationships let me know your thoughts on that as well a huge thank you for spending 20 to 30 minutes with me today getting involved in the channel means the absolute world as always you're awesome don't forget that and i will see you in the next one take care guys much love wake up get up stretch my legs some breakfast, milk and eggs Brush my teeth up, wash my face Throw my clothes on, start my day Wake up, I can smell the smoke from the bacon Let's go, see the sun shining from the windows Okay, I know that's a damn